True North is a 2020 CGI film which focuses on a family as they have to induce the horrors inside of a prisoner camp in North Korea. This film was actually recommended by Saberspark, who believes that in his words, this film is right up my alley. Personally, I'm not seeing it. But hey, he's even provided the footage for this film, so I guess it would be rude not to. And I'm sure most of you know this already, but just in case you don't, Saber Spark is also an animation review on YouTube and tends to focus on the weirder side of animation. So if you haven't already, do go check him out, link in the description. And whilst I'm giving a shout out, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. This film highlights the government's extensive data tracking on its citizens, and honestly it's something that goes on in the rest of the world too, especially when it comes to your online browsing. To help secure your internet privacy, you'll want to get a virtual private network such as NordVPN. With NordVPN, your data is double encrypted, allowing you to browse securely at home and whilst travelling, with none of your data being logged, not even with Nord themselves. NordVPN isn't just great for security, but also being able to access content sites such as Netflix from all over the world. It certainly helped me when I wanted to catch up with Godzilla films for the Kong vs Godzilla release. Just go to nordvpn.com forward slash Steve Rev, or click the link in the description to get a discount on your subscription. There's also a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied, so it's completely risk free. That's nordvpn.com forward slash Steve Rev. True North was directed by Eiji Han Chimizu, whose mother could have actually ended up in a North Korean camp, should she have chosen to move back to North Korea. To give a bit of history, during the 60s to 80s, North Koreans who were living in Japan were treated as second class citizens, so there was this big movement for those people to head back to North Korea which was being presented as a paradise of opportunity and would give them the chance to return to their roots and help build a great nation. Unfortunately though, this wasn't the case and when these people arrived in North Korea, they essentially had all their money and possessions taken and would be frowned upon as traitors, being seen as people who abandoned their roots to go live out in enemy nations and as a result would be heavily monitored by the government and would often be thrown into prisoner camps if they were suspected of any treason. Which to be honest, there didn't really need to be much suspicion of. Because as we see in the film, you yourself don't even need to be the one accused of the crime, as one elderly lady is taken away because her son-in-law happened to be listening to a South Korean radio station. My son-in-law listened to a radio program from South Korea, and now my daughter and grandchildren are gone too. The director's mother had a former lover, and he was one of the many people moving out of Japan to head back to North Korea. Luckily for her however, she decided not to go with him and opted to stay in Japan. After hearing this story, this gave Shimizu a sort of survivor's guilt feeling, and so he felt compelled to learn more about these prisoner camps and get this information out to the rest of the world. After speaking to former prisoners, he would rush out to spread the word of the horrors going on in the camps, and though people had strong reactions to what they were hearing, they wouldn't show much enthusiasm to take any action. So he would take a step back to reflect on how to better grab people's attention, and he came to the conclusion that he needed to make these prisoners feel more relatable. So along with all the horror stories, he would also get stories of compassion, romance, and even humour that would occur in the camps. He also wanted to be able to present this in the form of a story, so turned to the medium of animation to help convey this. 
In the early stages, Shimitsu actually managed to contact Hollywood to pitch his story idea, who initially showed great interest in the film. But then unfortunately he didn't hear much back afterwards. In an interview, he suspects the reason for the radio silence was due to the recent release of the 2014 film, The Interview, which was a political comedy film which took many jabs at North Korea, and the leader, Kim Jong-un. North Korea didn't react all too kindly to this negative portrayal, and threatened action against Sony should the film get released. Sony had to delay the film to make edits, but even then, Sony would then have their computer systems hacked by a group called Guardians of Peace. Ironic. So with all this drama going on, it was likely that Hollywood wasn't all too keen to release any more anti-North Korean films. Disappointed, but not deterred, Shimitsu saw other means to get the film made. But without any Hollywood financial backup, he would end up having to fund the project himself. He turned towards Indonesia, where hiring animators was a lot cheaper, and managed to find a small team to complete the film. This results in the animation looking pretty low quality, especially for a film made in 2020. But I'll talk about this in greater detail later on. For now, let's take a look at the plot. The film introduces us to Johan and his family living in North Korea. We have his mother, father, and sister named Mihi. Things seem to be going normal, well as normal as things get in North Korea, until one day, Johan's father goes missing, and the family are visited by a set of government officials, who state that Johan's father has been suspected of spying for the Japanese government. After ransacking the apartment, the government officials have the family taken away to a prisoner camp. They soon learn that life in the prison isn't going to be all too pleasant, as they witness beatings, starvations, disease, and even executions. The family are quickly put to work in harsh manual labour, with the mum and sister farming and Johan working down the mines. At first, Johan really struggles, not meeting his work quota, and even being mocked by other children for being half Japanese. Shut up you half pig Jap! Grunt like a pig! But he soon learns to toughen up, and even embraces the mocking of the other kids in order to get extra food. The family come across another young boy named Insu, who is left orphaned after his mother is executed. Insu is kind and possesses a stutter. Good, good, good evening. Which also causes him to be mocked by the other children. Look, look! Stammering pig and dirty Japanese pig are friends! <laughs> Insu is adopted by the family, and he and Johan quickly form a friendship. As the years go by, Johan begins to bond with some of the guards, and even gets promoted to supervisor within the camp. During this process, he begins to lose empathy with others, and adopts the attitude of the strong surviving no, no, and the weak no. dying. What are you doing? Kindness will kill you here. Piss off, old man. Which causes even his own mother to become ashamed of him. And it's not until that she later passes away that Johan manages to I'm find sorry. his humanity again I'm sorry. and sees the reward for showing care and compassion to the other prisoners. And this is where you see the director really trying to inject the traits to make the prisoners more relatable, as we not only see Johan adopting compassion, but also the other prisoners in the camp as well. And through this they become stronger and better their standards of living. This is something the guards would do their best to deter happening, as they would actively encourage prisoners to snitch on each other in return for some extra food. We also begin to see a romance blossoming between Mihi and Insu. But unfortunately this is where the happiness ends, as there is also to be another romance blossoming, which causes things to take a very dark turn. And I'm just going to put a spoiler warning here for those that don't want the last portion of the film spoiled. Skip to this section if you want to avoid spoilers. So yeah, Insu isn't the only one who's taken an interest in Mihi, as one of the guards has also been noticing her. One evening when Mihi is out collecting water, the guard confronts her and ends up raping her. 
This causes Insu to go chasing after the guard, which ends up with him being taken away for torture, and potentially execution. On top of that, with Mihi now being pregnant, there's a time limit pressure to escape the prison, because as we saw earlier in the film, any woman found to be pregnant in the camp, regardless of the reasons, will be executed. Against all odds, Insu survives his intense torture, and is brought back to the camp, so Johan comes up with a plan to have all three of them sneak out of the prison, which involves them hiding away in a secret compartment underneath a minecart. They decide to make the escape on the Day of the Sun, where the prison will be celebrating Kim Il-sung's birthday. Whilst everyone is gathered in the hall, Johan causes a distraction by telling the generals that the guards have been watching South Korean media. During the chaos, Mihi and Insu manage to escape but are soon stopped by the same guard, who raped Mihi earlier on. But in a shocking moment of mercy, the guard decides not to raise the alarm and actually lets the two escape. The film then cuts to a TED talk, where the speaker telling the story, revealed to be Insu, explains that Yuhan never planned to escape with them, as there was only room for two in the car, and he pleads for the people listening to take action as these camps are still going on to this very day. We cut back to North Korea, where we find that Johan is still alive in the prison, and is still helping other prisoners. The film ends on a hopeful note that one day they will all be freed, and as the credits roll, we see satellite photos revealing actual prison camps in North Korea. So yeah, as you can tell, True North is a pretty dark film with an obvious message attached to it. I think the director succeeds in getting the message across, as we definitely see enough of the horrors that occur, and we see his efforts to make these characters relatable through the notions of compassion and romance. But what I like about this film as well is how it presents some of the not so obvious morals. Take Johan for example. In one scene he tells the guards about an old man trying to steal additional food for his sick daughter, which ends up with the old man getting taken away, and the daughter dying. But the only reason Johan told on him was so that he could get extra food as a reward, so that he could feed his sick sister. So you ask yourself, was Johan right to do what he did? Would you have done the same in that situation? And then there's the guard that we talked about earlier, who despite the horrific crime he committed, he's not shown to be in a clear villainous light, as he offered compassion to Johan and his sister when they were being taken away refuses to take part in the grooming like the other guards, and has his moment of mercy at the end. It does make me wonder whether there's meant to be additional scenes with this guy, to make more of a love triangle plot between Insu and Mihi, but perhaps it needed to be cut for more time. I also found it interesting how this film incorporated a TED talk at the beginning and end, an obvious nod from the director who had previously given his own TED talks. I think these scenes could have worked better if they were filmed in live action, as it would have made the story he's telling feel all the more real. But maybe with a tight budget, doing them this way would have been far too costly. Speaking of costs, let's talk about the animation. The animation quality is noticeably poor, with stiff character movements and low polygon models. This of course is being due to the film having a very limited budget. The director actually addresses this in an interview, and state that he feels this lower quality animation would actually help attract more people to watch the film, as it makes it less graphic and intense to view. Which, yeah, I can see where he's coming from, but ultimately, I disagree. I don't think people would be turned off because a heavy subject such as this is presenting itself as being all too real. Take the 1993 film for example, Schindler's List. That film deals with incredibly heavy and hard to watch scenes from the Nazi concentration camps, yet was also a huge hit at the box office. I mean, if Schindler's List was presented in the same animation style as this film, could you honestly say it would have still performed as well? It's kind of similar to the animation problem with Chance, which dealt with the issue of dogfighting, but again, had a very low animation budget. I think True North doesn't suffer from this as badly, because you can get away with more in making human characters stiff looking than you can animals. And though the animation is on the weaker side, everything else really works great. The voice acting is solid, 
The musical score offers a lot of emotion, and despite the low budget animation, there are still some good uses of lighting and various camera angles. She needs food. Maybe you shouldn't have given all our food away. And looking at behind the scenes, it does seem like they were taking great care to present everything as accurate looking as possible. In conclusion, True North is a heavy hitting film which highlights the atrocities going on in North Korea. And in that sense, it succeeds in its attempts to raise awareness of it. It has strong characters who develop throughout, presents difficult moral dilemmas, offers good voice acting and immersive music, the animation can be a deterrence on surface level, and I get that it won't be for everyone, but in complete honesty, as the film went on, I found myself not being distracted by it, as the story and characters were good on their own merits. Do let me know what you guys think of the film and whether you are affected by the cheap animation, or if you haven't seen the film, are you dissuaded from seeing it because of the animation? And until the next one, take care. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about who you want to be.